You are so welcome back to Saturday AM. He cracks me up. All right, for fans of Celebrity MasterChef Ireland, viewers may have noticed the serious lack of judgment chefs. Robin Gill and Daniel Clifford had an allowing one chancer. <laughs> into Excuse the final. me. Oh. My kitchen boss, the food messiah <laughs> that is, Robin Gill, joins us this morning. But before we speak to the lovely Robin, Let's take an exclusive clip or oh, here from next oh, yes. Thursday. So look at this. Forward. Forward. Right, hang on, put my glasses on. <laughs> I think the level of cooking throughout has been remarkable. They've been on an incredible journey, there's no doubt about that. Today, we've got three chefs in the kitchen. Come on, chef. Look at this. So you don't have to ask me, but you're tight, my head's gone blue. <laughs> right now, it's anyone's game. It's all going to be down to the three dishes that they cook for us. That. You look good there. It's <laughs> like a bit tight on you, wasn't it? Chef. Good morning. Good morning, morning. Chef. Morning. I'm going to call you Morning Chef as well. <laughs> morning. <laughs> Sounds like a new TV show. Scared of you, I can tell you. No, he's not scary. Daniel Clifford now. Is See, he? this is it. He always tried to portray me as bad cop, but you know. He did. Uh, yes. Yeah, he did a brutal always. job. It? All the hugs. No, you <laughs> all the lols. Yeah, all he, the lols. He was the fierce man for shaking the hands and yeah. well done, Chef. Yeah. What I loved about Tanya was that he couldn't pronounce anybody's name correctly. That was the best. What Oosh. were you called? Oosh. Well, he got me, uh, he called Ocean, which is Ocean, I called Monday. <laughs> Monday, can you bring your plate down, please? Yeah, he was terrified he was going to be crucified, no, you know, by the Irish public, so. How was the experience for you? I it mean, was amazing. It, I'm not going to lie, it was quite <clears> nerve-wracking. I mean, it was, you know, that's my first sort of big TV sort of role like yeah. that, and I was very nervous, and I was actually especially with it being a lot of celebrities who are used to the camera and all that, I was thinking, they're just going to swallow, you know, swallow me up and yeah. I won't be able to deal with it. But the moment that everybody put on that apron oh, good Lord, and yeah. the, the deathly silence of that moment just before <laughs> people got cooking, you could just see they were all yeah. fishes out of water. Yeah. And it was, it was up to us then to kind of train people to try and cook. Well, the that, whole object was... Absolutely, yeah. That's what we wanted to do, say, right, why? We could be judgmental and and right from the beginning, but what we really wanted to do was like when we get to the final, or when we get to the semi-final, the quarter-final, to actually have bring people on a journey where they actually are much better cooks from when they started, and that was our, our well, objection. Well, you see, when you said the word train there, I was thinking to myself, like, you know, I can't really cook, but I'm getting there, I'm learning. So if you've got the learners, the L plates, yeah. and then you've got the whiz kids in the kitchen, which wow. is Simon here, you know, I mean, Simon has four children, you know, he cooks every single day, you cook on point to a, to, a, to a level that I think is, is chef-like, kitchen-like quality. So how do you <clears> decipher and how do you help those that have the L plates on them? Well, it's interesting because everybody has different personalities and different skill sets. You know, you someone like Ushin who barely ever been in the kitchen. He only could do toast or something. But is hugely competitive. Yeah. And from the moment that he uh, left that kitchen, when he was still in the competition, he didn't, and he couldn't understand why, he was going and working in professional kitchens or cooking till two or th three in the morning with his wife. Yeah. So he was extremely dedicated. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, I was saying to Robin, you know, that I think any, any one of us who went yeah. into it, you know, at the end of the day, it's a competition, you know, and you don't want to make a fool of yourself. You know what I mean? You certainly didn't. You're in well, the final. Well, I, I made some serious mistakes. Well, there could you. be more to come. Um, but I went and got help. You know, everybody you did. did. Everybody went and got help. Yeah, and it was unfortunate <clears throat> for some people that maybe, like Samantha, had incredible skill yeah. set. She was a natural. Yeah. And unfortunately, how she ended up leaving the competition was she had a young daughter and she actually couldn't break away from it. And I think the night before she was cooking one of her main dishes that was, she was supposed to shine, she didn't practice it. No, and that I was a downfall. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Whereas you have to keep up in your game and everybody's skill level was rising as, as the show went on. And, and that's where some people left. And poor Mundy, he was an incredible cook. If he Amazing. was in the final, there's a good chance he could have taken it because he was yeah. a natural cook. Yeah. But he couldn't follow a, a recipe or any sort of rules. He was a freewheeler. He, was, he made his own <laughs> rules. Freewheeler, you know? I love that. In terms of, of, of you, Robin, because people are, have been watching the show, obviously, and yourself and Daniel are getting great feedback. Just in terms of your background, in terms of your, your culinary background. Yeah. I mean, you're in the business quite a while. You yeah. Start, so where did you start off? Started off in Dublin for a couple of years. The first restaurant was a Stampa. Then I went out to the coast to what's now Hartley's was Namara. Yeah. Lovely sort of 
seafood restaurant. And then I followed two pals of mine, um, Ed Daly and Paul McNerney, they both great restaurants here in Dublin, over to London. They, they'd got themselves jobs in like Michelin star restaurants. Mm. And sort of 15 years ago, that's what everybody did. The, mm. the culinary scene in Ireland wasn't great. There was only two or three restaurants of note. That's right, yeah. But now it's, it's much better, you know. But it was just the thing to do was to go over to London and, and, and you know. But you've now, you've now got a little empire going over there. You have a couple, three restaurants going at the Yeah, moment. four, four restaurants now. Oh, pardon, yes. four, Sorry. Four. Yeah. That's all right, but, four restaurants going. Yeah. And they're Gosh. all going well. Yeah, all going really well. It was, we started with a dairy four years ago. And in Clapham. In Clapham, that's right. Mm. And then that was hugely successful. No PR still to date, but it just, I don't know, it was the right thing at the right time. It's simple set up and, and dining room where it's really fun and there's music blaring but then what you have actually on the plate and, and the service you get is, is, this, is, is of that of a fine dining restaurant yeah. but you feel totally relaxed, you know? So we set that benchmark and then on the back of that I had these great people in the business who worked alongside me mm -hmm. and they were ready to do their own thing and then all of a sudden we were getting approached to, with properties and, and finance so I'm kind of now setting up other businesses well, to give other people works, a chance and that's yeah. sort of where we are so that's why it's grown, you know. Now I have to ask you about Simon. Yeah. You don't have um, to. No, I do. I want to know. Well, I, do you want me to go over there for a minute? Yeah, he's going to give me a go there for left. He can do the cooking. La, 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 la. Um, no, look, I mean, obviously, we all know that he has uh, made the final. We're so proud of you. Can't wait to see how he gets on. Um, have you any tips and tricks for him? Any advice for him? I know you see him and you have seen him in terms of steering him and navigating him in the right direction, but does he need it? He does need it, but he does listen. Do you know what We're I mean? We're talking about him as if he's not even here. I know. Does Hello? he need it? <laughs> We're like a parent-teacher meeting or something. That he's <laughs> yeah. I will do better. Does he need? Is he going to get the A? Is he going to get the gold he's star? He's a listener, and that's what's important. Good. You know, of course like, he is. He's brilliant. And that was frustrating for us as judges that if we were trying to give someone a, a help they'd be seen as being a bit too proud or something like but that. But he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He would listen and he'd beat himself up. And that was, oh. at one point, it was your downfall because yeah. you were so upset mm -hmm. that you'd oh. made a mistake on his first day when he overcooked right. it or when undercooked, undercooked the lamb. The lamb. It was freezing. Was you thought you were gone. Like... You were like, that's it, you know? Yeah. And I could see how, but that, that made I me I remember kind of... actually when I, when I put the plate up to Daniel and uh, Robin, and before we were rolling, and I, just, I, was, I was close to tears. I now, and I'm thinking, would, I'm sitting yeah, watching these programs up, for yeah. years going, would you get over yourself? You're cooking. You're not performing surgery. But you're a perfectionist. But I was, so, I was disgusting myself. And I remember leaning over before we rolled on cameras and I said to the boys, I bet you can't wait to taste that. And Daniel turned around to me and said, he looked me straight in the eyes and he said, you need to take a chill pill, mate. Yeah. And I went, <laughs> right, he's either going to lash me over here now or they're right. going to encourage me. <clears throat> and they did. Good. Because everything else in the plate was great. But I knew I'd mm. made a bag of it. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's the thing. That's good. It's good that you knew. And also good that you cared. And for me, I see that if I'm employing chefs these days, if they get really upset, yeah. I'm, you know, I don't come down hard at them. I don't come down hard at them at all. But that's for me, is a good sign because they actually care. Would, would Simon be good enough to be a chef in a kitchen? Would Did he you see him over in uh, Peter Terre? He smashed it. He had the most difficult it. dish. Lamb again. Oh, lamb. Good luck. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. You know, you weren't going to get, get But when your mum walked up to me and went, with a whole lamb went, right, we're going to fillet this down to a French trail. Oh, my God. A little bit of... <laughs> right. Because my experience with lamb hadn't been good in the competition up to that. So but he, he smashed it. Yeah, so he could be... Like, the lads were super yes, impressed chef. with him. We were yes, impressed. Yes, and the lads in the kitchen were impressed. They couldn't believe it. And he held his own on the most difficult section. It was four cuts of meat on that plate. And all the timings had to be perfect. And he smashed it. So there you go. <gasps> Who wonders? I was so nervous the I was final. going to let it slip, you know. <laughs> it's so exciting. Are you yeah. excited about, I'm excited about watching it. Yeah, I am excited. Okay. Right, enough about the cooking. Right. We can't say, <laughs> we no, need to wrap. Thanks a million for coming over. Thanks, thanks, thanks for having me. Thank you. And best luck this week. Thank and you. Best of luck you. <laughs>